What we're going to be going over here are stock dividends and stock dividends is where you capitalize part of the company's earnings and that's by reclassifying earned capital here or retained earnings to contributed capital here common stock. So let's go look at our example here. Corporation A is going to have these equity accounts here. They're going to have some common stock additional paid in capital and retained earnings here. So for the common stock they're going to have 120,000 shares here outstanding at a $5 par value per share for a total of $600,000 and then the additional paid in capital here to common stock is 950000 and the retained earnings are sitting at $2 million here. So the total shareholders equity here is going to be $3,550,000 just the sum total of these the common stock additional paid in capital and the retained earnings. And for our example here there's going to be a 5% stock dividend declared and at the time of the declaration of this dividend here the stock price uh, for a common stock is going to be forty dollars per share. That's its market value or its fair value. Now for our stock dividend there's 120,000 shares outstanding at a five percent uh, stock dividend rate here so that's going to equal six thousand shares of stock dividend here that are going to be distributed to the share rate, uh, shareholders on a pro rata basis and we'll go through that here. So uh, first thing we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be capitalizing part of the retained earnings and we do that by transferring at the fair value or the market value of this common stock in this case and we're going to be um, transferring it for a, a stock dividend less than 20 or 25 percent. So when you're talking about a that they call a small doc stock dividend and it's based on the number of common uh, shares outstanding here and if it's less than 20 or 25 percent the uh, uh, dividend or the stock dividend uh, that we're declaring here then it's considered a small dividend and it's based on the market value of the shares being transferred or being issued here to the shareholders market value here so in this case we have that five percent stock dividend so that involves six thousand shares here and the five percent you can see is less than the 25 percent rate here so at the when we're talking about a small stock dividend then we base everything here on the market value or the fair value of the shares here so let's look at our example here First, we've got these accounts. We're going to have our common stock, additional paid in capital here, and our retained earnings. Now, you notice here there, there is no asset. This does not affect any assets or liabilities. All it affects here is shareholders' equity between these, these three accounts. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer our retained earnings here to the paid in capital. And we'll do that here. So the corp a corporation is going to issue its own stock to its shareholders. And there's no assets being exchanged here and there's no exchange of money here. It's just that the corp here, uh, shareholders aren't going to pay a cent here. All they're going to, all the corp is going to do is they're going to issue its own stock here to the shareholders here on this stock dividend. So let's start with our retained earnings here. Well, we had a credit here of $2 million sitting in it. Now we have the 5% dividend here. That was at 120 shares at the 5% here at times the $40 market price per share, the fair value per share here. So that equates out here to $240,000. So we reduce our retained earnings here by $240,000. And what we're essentially doing was we're transferring our retained earnings, our earned capital here into the uh, contributed capital here, common stock and the additional paid in capital. So what we do here, our debit here at 240,000 goes to common stock, 30, common stock's gonna get 30,000, credit it for 30,000. Now that's based on uh, the par value. The par value does not decrease on this stock dividend. It just remains the same. So we had that 6,000 shares of dividend at the $5 par value here. That equates to $30,000. Now the remainder goes into additional paid in capital for common stock. So we would credit that here for $210,000. And that's based on um, the additional paid in capital would be the market price here less what we put in a $5 par value we put into here times those 6,000 shares. That equates to $210,000. So we would have debited our retained earnings or reduce our uh, earn capital here by 240,000 and then we capitalized that amount here. Um, 30,000 went to our common stock and the remaining balance of 210,000 went to additional paid in capital of our common stock for the excess over the par amount. So what we have done here, 
let's just look at it here in these terms. So first off, we had, okay, we talked about the par value does not decrease or increase. It just stays at whatever the par value was here, that $5 per share here. And we had those 6,000 shares dividend. So we gave that, the, credited that here for 30,000. Now what we did do is we increased the number, uh, the outstanding number of shares that were outstanding. So we originally had 120,000 here plus the $6,000 stock dividend. So we're going to end up with the number of shares outstanding here at $126,000. So we increased it by that stock dividend here of 6,000. Uh, shares here, and, and again, remember that was that that was that five percent dividend here. 120,000 shares that were originally outstanding. The five percent dividend gave us those 6,000 shares. And then the other thing we really want to look at here is that the shareholders' equity here does not change. Uh, we had a reduction here in our retained earnings. Remember that was the reduction here at 240,000 or on our retained earnings, but we increased our common stock and our additional paid in capital. We increased our common stock here by 30,000 plus our additional paid in capital here by 210,000. So uh, we have a zero net change here in our stockholders equity. It just remained the same. The only thing that changed here was the number of shares that are outstanding. That increased 126,000. Uh, from 120,000. Okay, so we looked at that here um, where we uh, reduced our retained earnings for that stock dividend and then we brought it into common stock at the the amount of the par amount went into the common stock uh, par value here and then the additional paid in capital here went to uh, the additional paid in capital of common stock. And that's all based here on the fact that it was a small stock dividend less than 20 or 25 percent. In this case it was 5 percent. And when you go with the small stock, stock dividend then everything is based on the fair value of the stock being issued here uh, or it was bis based on the fair value or the market value of the stock being issued. Okay, so we've taken care of our trans here transfer from the earned capital account here to the contributed capital here. So now let's go and let's look at how this affects our stockholders here. So okay here we're looking at it. Each stockholder maintains exactly the same proportionate interest in the company. Number one, the stock issued to the stockholders is on a pro rata basis. We'll look at that here and each stockholder has the same total book value here after this uh, stock dividend. So let's start with our book value here per share of our common stock here. And that's really the shareholders equity divided by the number of shares. So before the stock dividend, we had that shareholders equity here of 3,550,000. And and we had a total of 120,000 shares outstanding. So our book value here was $29.58 per share. Now after the stock dividend, we still had the same uh, shareholders equity here at 3,550,000, but our number of shares increased to 100, 120, we have 126,000 shares outstanding now. And if that arithmetic works out here to $28.17 per share. So you see our book value went down here because we uh, per share on a per share basis because we have now more shares outstanding here. Now let's uh, let's assume here that, a sh and we're going to look at this pro rata basis and how that works here. So let's assume that the share a shareholder owns 10% of the common stock or they own a 10% interest in the in this company here. So uh, looking at it on a share basis here, well they had 120,000 shares originally here and if you take 10% of that plus the 6,000 shares in the stock dividends plus 10% of that, that's going to give the shareholders now going to have 12,600 shares after this stock dividend. They originally had 120,000 or well, they originally would have had 12,000 but now they're going to have uh, 12,600. 10% of the uh, total outstanding stock. Now before the dividend here we have 12,000 shares at that $29.58 per share here uh, book value that's going to give them the total a book value here that they would own is $354,960. Now let's look at it after here. So after, well, they're now going to have 12,600 shares. The book value has gone down to $28.17 per share, but 
that equates here to the same amount here, $354,942. So after the stock dividend here, their book value is maintained at the same amount here as before the stock dividend. Okay, now let's just look at it here in terms of this stock issued on a pro rata basis and understand what we're talking about. So we have the 10% interest here received and that they have an 10% interest in the company so they're going to get 10% of the additional shares in the stock in the stock dividend. So uh, they have the 10% ownership times 6,000 shares that would give them six uh, uh, of this additional 6,000 shares here to stock dividend, the 10% owner here would get 600 shares. So before they had a total of 12,000 shares here plus the 600 that were added by the stock dividend they received. So they're going to get 12,600 shares here. And again, that stock dividend, we, it was that 5% dividend here, 120,000 shares outstanding at the 5% dividend. That was that total 6,000 shares. So our 10% owner here is going to get 600 shares of that total 6,000 share dividend. So just putting those numbers back in here with that 10% ownership here, you see that the um, uh, shareholders equ or the sh shareholders book value hadn't changed here even though they st it, it went down here be after the um, stock dividend because there were more shares outstanding but they received more shares here they received 600 additional shares over what they originally had so just multiplying your numbers out here based on those book values here that we we did here before and after the stock dividend they're going to come up with the same ownership, uh, same book value ownership. Hasn't changed here. Even though uh, we've had the stock dividend, their uh, ownership here hasn't changed uh, based on that pro rata basis. So you can understand what we're talking about a pro rata basis. So if whatever percentage you own in the company, then you're going to get the same percentage of those uh, based on, a, on the stock dividend that's issued here. And then it, it all works out here based on that Pro rata basis. Okay, so that takes care of our stock, a small stock dividend is what we talked about here because it was a dividend for less than the um, 20 or 20, 20 or 25 percent here. Uh, it was a 5 percent dividend. It was less than what they what they consider a small stock dividend. So that was based, you know, on uh, we talk about that again just to review it here. That was based on the market value of the shares being distributed. Okay, so that takes care of our. St uh, small stock dividend.